We're taking a break from talking about weight loss this week. I'm going to focus on another benefit of intermittent fasting. Autophagy. 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 Not autophagy, it's autophagy. Autophagy. The last time you said autophagy, loads of people mocked you in the comments. Autophagy. Well, check it out then. Use that pronunciation guide website. Okay, well, let's check that out. Autophagy. Oh. Hey Carb Dodgers, my name is Dr. Dan Magd. I'm so glad you've landed on my channel, which is all about achieving lasting weight loss through low carb, real food nutrition. Now we've known about autophagy since the 1960s, but it's been a particularly hot topic over the last few years since Japanese cell biologist, Dr. Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology for his work on autophagy back in 2016. So what is autophagy? Well, the word autophagy itself literally means self-eating when translated from the Greek. It's the process that cells use to get rid of damaged structures within themselves in order to turn them into newer, healthier versions of themselves. Think of it like decluttering, but for the inside of your cells. And there's a lot going on inside a cell. Take your wardrobe, for example. It's normal that over time, you're gonna need to get rid of some of your older, worn out clothes and buy some new ones. There's got to be some out with the old and in with the new to keep some sort of order. Without wardrobe or autophagy, your clothes just become more and more ragged and damaged and you never make room for new ones. And when you think about it, aging is just more and more damage occurring at the cellular level over a prolonged period of time. Or worse still, the failure to repair damage can lead to things like cancer. Alternatively, you don't clear out your old clothes properly and you buy new clothes anyway, and your wardrobe starts to spill over. You start bagging those extra clothes up and leave them lying around, and over time, they build up and you can't even open the doors anymore. Well, some of the common neurodegenerative conditions are caused by abnormal clumping of proteins within the brain, which can cause damage to nerve cells. Amyloid plaques are a feature of Alzheimer's disease. And we see something called Lewy body formation in Parkinson's disease. But with wardrobe or autophagy working perfectly, you're not only getting rid of those old clothes, you're selling them on eBay and using that money to buy new clothes. And that's just like with actual autophagy, when you're breaking down those old damaged bits of the cells and building them back up into new good things. I think that's about as far as I can push the wardrobe autophagy analogy. So I think it's time to move on from that. This new understanding of autophagy is helping us look at certain diseases in a completely different way. We think that a lack of autophagy plays a role in neurodegenerative diseases, in cancer, in autoimmune diseases, in infectious diseases, and in aging. And talking of aging, the bad news for all of us is that the rate of autophagy does decrease as we get older. So the benefits of potentially increasing the rate of autophagy are pretty obvious. And there is a huge amount of money being spent by pharmaceutical companies trying to provide drugs that will increase autophagy. And I'm sure we'll see the results of those trials within the next 50 years or so. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna wait for that research to become available before I start to do something with this. And I'm also not gonna take a drug if there's a way to do it entirely naturally. And if you're interested in this too, then you're definitely gonna be interested in the next bit of this video. What increases autophagy? How do we upregulate this process? Now, both ketogenic diets and exercise upregulate this to a certain extent, but by far the most potent way to increase autophagy is nutrient deprivation. And by nutrient deprivation, I mean fasting. And so the next question is logically, how long do you need to fast to activate autophagy? Okay, so here is the slight problem. How do you measure autophagy? How do you know it's happening? Well, the best way is to look for something called autophagosomes. And these are what are actually doing the autophagy. In one study, mice that fasted for 24 hours produced significant numbers of autophagosomes. But we're not mice, so we can't say that this translates over to humans. So we're pretty limited in what we know, but there is a general expert consensus around this, and that is that you need to fast for about 
18 hours to get the process of autophagy properly started. And you need to stay in that fasted state for about two to three days in order to get the maximum benefits. So quick disclaimer, this is not my medical advice. I'm not telling you to go and fast for 72 hours. I am a doctor, I'm not your doctor. And especially if you've got ongoing health conditions, it may be something you wanna discuss with your own doctor before attempting a longer term fast like this. Can you have too much autophagy? Some is good, so more equals better, right? Let's go back to that wardrobe analogy. If you're selling your clothes on eBay faster than you're replacing them, you're gonna run out of clothes. Similarly, too much autophagy, such as fasting for too long or fasting too frequently, may cause harm rather than doing good. Again, there is a general consensus about this, and they say that two or three longer fasts within a 12 month period should be sufficient. But again, who knows for sure? Ultimately, we don't wanna be overdoing these things. Life is about balance. With fasting comes feasting. And for me, this new information we have about autophagy just serves to reinforce that we are hardwired at a genetic level for feast and fast, not for this ongoing carbohydrate-based three to five meals a day sometimes. Our ancestors would have to survive for long periods without food. It makes sense that evolution has given us a process like autophagy to use up our intracellular waste for energy during those times of starvation. So guys, that was a really high level overview of intermittent fasting and autophagy. I found it really, really interesting. I hope you did too. I'd love to hear, having watched this video, are longer fasts something you're thinking about trying? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know if you've tried a longer fast, you know, up to 72 hours in the past. How did you find it? And I think this is a really, really important topic that more people need to know about. So I'd really appreciate it. If you think this video has been good, then please share it on your social media channels. There's gonna be loads more videos about intermittent fasting coming up soon. They're all gonna be linked up here in this playlist which you can click on and just get taken to all of my intermittent fasting videos and you can subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of the new videos as I release them. Hopefully I'll see you next Tuesday.